broken video games. In the course of just one week, we got two brand new games that were completely broken. <laughs> Jedi Fallen Frame Rate and Red Fail. If you were expecting 60 frames per second, like all games that have been released recently, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be a little disappointed. That's wild. Clearly there's a problem here, and it's getting worse. I didn't mean my sanity, but that's also true. So back in the Boomerzoic era, they didn't even have the internet, so they just made games by smashing rocks together. And that meant if they released a video game and it was broken, it would stay broken. And the worst offenders were always the most rancid type of video game possible. The movie tie-in. The E.T. game was literally so bad that they buried it in a pit. I knew broken ass games well as a kid. After getting the Wii, I was super pumped. I was under the impression that every single game would use amazing, accurate motion controls. So when 12 year old me found Iron Man for the Wii in the Walmart bargain bin, you know I picked that shit up. I was expecting the most amazing action game of all time. And then I remember the sheer, crushing, depressive disappointment of spending hours doing this. It was like I was paralyzed, expecting something amazing to happen, but it never did. The game was broken to the core. I felt like managing to turn left or right was somehow an achievement. I is this even a game? And is it just me, or does it look like Pepper was designed by Twitch chat? I felt betrayed for losing $15 on this Walmart bin trash. And I vowed to never pick up another movie tie-in game ever again. So with the ability to update games using the internet, the corporate overlords realize there's a new type of cash grab. Releasing broken games and promising to fix them later. Smithis, release the games. Oh, but these games aren't finished, sir. Shouldn't we work on making released games better? That sounds reasonable. Okay, great. Release the games. And that's where things really went to hell. Big high profile games started to release completely broken. And despite the ability to fix them later, an insane amount of them were never fixed. Sega was so focused on releasing Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 on every platform imaginable that it hadn't even occurred to them to make sure that the game actually works. I mean, look at this. They had to delist the Xbox version in 2010 to avoid damaging the brand. Good thing they never damaged the Sonic brand after that. I'm not wearing pants. That would just be embarrassing. Then you have games like Assassin's Creed Unity, an entry in a franchise that needed to release a game every single year. And it worked well enough when they just changed the cover art and released the same game every year. But then they tried to make something new. And to be fair, that was asking a little too much of Ubisoft. You can really see the blood, sweat, and tears the developers put into this game. And the teeth and the eyeballs. Maybe you don't want to see all of that put in a game. It's kind of gross. But you know what? I didn't expect much from Sonic and Assassin's Creed. What really hurts is when it happens to your favorite games. Mass Effect 1 and 2 are some of the greatest games of all time. Getting immersed in the story, saving the galaxy, getting to know the characters. So when Bioware made a new sequel in the franchise, I was pumped. And after years of waiting, release day finally came. Introducing Mass Effect Andromeda. Terrible performance, constant glitches, and the most stiff, awkward looking bastards ever. <laughs> How does this happen? How can you make this and then make that? I don't know what I expected when EA is the one behind everything here. Then they made a little game called Anthem. EA decided that Anthem needed to be bigger, better, and most importantly, a cooperative online microtransaction heavy looter shooter live service Illuminati RPG type game which made it impossible for Bioware to even finish it. There were so many ideas and promises made about this game that it was just impossible to not be broken. It's gotten to the point where quality games still release in a broken state. Like Cyberpunk 2077. The launch of this game was essentially theft for anyone playing on a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. It was that bad. It got to the point where Sony decided that selling this game actually made them look bad. 
and they offered refunds. That doesn't happen unless the situation is bad. But a couple years later, after playing the game on PC, I think it's actually good. Well, the parts that aren't still broken. This is what happens when publishers force their employees to crunch for months. Plus, then they forget to water their plants and feed their dog. And do we really want to see Charlie starve because of this, guys? Obviously, broken games need to stop. But what makes a broken game into a bad game? I know that part of the fun of games like Skyrim is modding it to introduce the most ridiculous stuff you can imagine. Watching the systems break becomes entertainment of its own. Entire YouTube channels are dedicated to breaking games for entertainment, and speedrunners use glitches all the time. Super Mario 64 is pretty universally praised as one of the best Mario games, but no one's complaining that Mario can clip through walls when he throws a bunny. That's because at its core, Mario 64 is just a good game. It has that, that, and most importantly, it has the, Plus, there aren't huge frame rate drops or glitches that make you fall into the void. Because the glitches are hidden, it makes it fun for people to go seek them out. So being broken isn't the problem. It's a specific type of broken. Like a corporate dementor that sucks all creativity from a game. That's what happened to Redfall. There's nothing to experiment with, it's just a broken game. You have vampires that don't even understand how to move or how to find you. I can do this forever! Are you sure about that? Imagine spending $70 on this when you could've just Ride it on Game Pass for 10 bucks. Or better yet, take the advice of anyone who's played it and just not pay for it at all. Lots of people try to defend this crap, like saying that the development cycle has gotten so long that it's okay that the game's broken at launch, they'll fix it later. But do you really think that giving the company more money for crappy games is a good idea? Just hoping that they pull off a miracle and fix the game is just not realistic. As soon as that profit margin drops, they'll bury the game right next to E.T.'s corpse. At the very least, the games we pay for should be finished as advertised. None of the trailers and commercials showed constant crashing and frame rate drops. If they don't finish the games, we're paying $70 for a glorified beta test. All of this just works. It's not working. It's not, I'm not kidding. Well, maybe. Uh, and again, it, it just works. It's not working. 